Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell. Welcome to Rome, the city of Peter and Paul. And I ask you to join me as we continue on our Lenten pilgrimage, visiting the stational churches found here in the city of Rome. Today, on this most sacred of days, on Holy Thursday, we recall particularly our Lord's gift of the Eucharist. The church turns our attention to the church of St. John Lateran. When we think of our Lord's gift of the Eucharist and what a great gift it was, we recall that how tonight, when the Pope goes to his basilica, he will kneel down and will bathe the feet of 12 individuals who represent the Apostolic College. This act of humility reminds us all that in the church we are called to service, to serve one another in imitation of the Lord. But it is also an evening of great joy. It is the one time in Lent where the glory is sung and the bells ring out throughout the Gloria as we recall that this was the evening where our Lord gave us the greatest gift that he had to give, the gift of himself, the gift of his abiding presence in the Holy Eucharist. The church in a special way brings our attention back to this basilica dedicated to the memory of our Savior, but also St. John, the beloved apostle. We recall that how on this special night, he leaned back upon the bosom of our Lord. In this intimate moment, he gathered a deep insight into the reality of our Lord's person. Numerous fathers have commented on the significance of this great moment. When we think of the precious nature of our Lord's gift, we remember how important it is for all of us as believing, committed Christians to approach the Eucharist with great reverence, that Mass always be celebrated with the dignity, the fact that it is really bringing back to us in our presence the precious body, blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Little gestures such as the genuflection, taking time to spend a moment in adoration and prayer, adoring our Lord who continues to remain with us. This is the evening where he gave us his last will and testament. And in that last will and testament, he gave us his greatest gift, the Holy Eucharist. As we think upon this most holy moment on this most holy night, when all over the Catholic world, Different Christians will be visiting altars set up in a special way to venerate our Lord's presence in the Eucharist. Let us also do likewise and go to the church of St. John Lateran. The nave of the Lateran has five vast aisles, and many believe that a number of the columns come from earlier buildings found throughout the city of Rome. Behind the first pilaster, on the right, is a fresco which is attributed to Giotto. This fresco represents Pope Boniface VIII in the act of proclaiming the first holy year in the year 1300. On Holy Thursday, all the churches throughout the city of Rome compete with one another to try to make the most beautiful repository altars for the Blessed Sacrament, since this is the night upon which our Lord instituted the Holy Eucharist. In the confession just before the high altar, one can see the tomb of Pope Martin V. It is a magnificent work of bronze by a Florentine artist named Simone Ghini, who had been a disciple of Donatello. He was also one of the artists who collaborated with Antonio Filarete who executed the famous bronze doors at St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. This tomb is important for us because Martin V, who died in the year 1413, had been elected by the Council of Constance and finally had brought to an end the great Western Schism, which had divided the church for so many years. At his election, we are told by contemporaries, men wept for joy. The Romans have continued a medieval practice of throwing coins down on his tomb for good luck. The inscription at the foot of the tomb describes Martin as temporum suorum felicitas, meaning that he was the joy of his times. The baldacchino over the main altar is medieval and is the work of a Sienese artist by the name of Giovanni de Stefano. Like so many other Roman churches that we have visited, it is essentially a Gothic work. 
in the upper portions of the baldacchino, behind a grill, is a very important relic chamber, which contains fragments of the heads of St. Peter and Paul, the principal saints of the Roman Church. This grill normally has curtains drawn, but if one is to ask the attendants in the church, those curtains can be drawn back, allowing for a viewing of the reliquaries. The choir area at the back of the church was extensively changed in the 19th century. The apse mosaic is the work of Jacobo da Torriti and Jacobo da Camerino. These two artists perform the same work on the apse mosaic in St. Mary Major. Along with images of Our Lady and John the Baptist, one can also see St. Francis and St. Anthony. The two men who executed the mosaic were Franciscans. The transept of the Lateran Basilica was designed at the end of the 16th century by Della Porta. It is done in a very rich style because the Blessed Sacrament altar here holds what is believed traditionally to be the one used by Christ at the Last Supper, which was brought from the Holy Land to Rome. This lovely altar makes use of marble and bronze columns. These bronze columns, it is believed, were taken from the great temple of Jupiter, which once stood on the Capitoline Hill. It is believed that the bronze columns were recast from the bronze prow of the ships of Cleopatra that were seized during the great Roman victory at the Battle of Actium. The papal altar at the center of the church also has within it another wooden table. It was believed that this table was taken from the home of Senator Pudens, with whom St. Peter stayed during his sojourn in Rome. It is believed that St. Peter used this wooden table to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Off the transept to the left, one can enter into the medieval cloister of St. John Lateran. Numerous fragments of sculpture and some relics can be found in this cloister, including a porphyry slab which it is believed the soldiers cast dice for the robe of Christ. As we are in the Basilica of the Savior, it is fitting at this time that we consecrate ourselves once again to his sacred heart on this the evening which he gave us the Eucharist. Most loving Jesus, Redeemer of the human race, look on us kneeling humbly before your altar. We are yours and yours we wish to be. But to be more surely united to thee, we freely consecrate ourselves today to your most sacred heart. Many people have never known you. Many too, despising your precepts, have rejected you. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to your sacred heart. Be king, O Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken you, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned you. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house. Lord, grant to your church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace and order to all nations. Make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry, Praise to the divine heart that wrought our salvation. To Jesus Christ be glory and honor forever. Amen.